Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Monday, July 5th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. Still watching Elsa here, tracking northwestward toward the southern Cuban coastline, expected to cross the island sometime tonight, and then emerge in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico or the Florida Straits tomorrow on Tuesday, and then on up, tracking west of the Florida Peninsula and toward the Big Bend region by Wednesday morning. If we look at the zoomed in loop here, we'll see that Elsa is still visually centered kind of where the deepest convection is here with the rotation happening in the middle of this clump of thunderstorms. That's mostly where the mid-level center has been over the last couple of days, but we've been talking about how Elsa's struggles have been rooted with its vertical alignment problems where the surface center has been just a little bit to the west of where the mid-level center is. We can actually go look in the recon data here and see what the plane found this morning. And it found pretty high pressures in here. The actual estimated surface pressure is not 1,009, but 1,006 or 1,007 based on the data found. And you can see that the circulation is actually a little bit weaker than yesterday. We have pretty weak flight level winds of about 45 knots at a maximum on the eastern side. Though the plane's data did suggest that surface winds are still in, in the range of 50 to 65 miles per hour, kind of oscillating within that range over the last few flights from the last 12 hours. And I can show you this was a NOAA aircraft, so they have a tail Doppler radar on board, and this graphic from the Hurricane Research Division shows you some of the data measured by that radar. First of all, you can see the, the actual radar-induced precipitation, or radar-measured precipitation here. And the center is right about there, and you see most of it's on the eastern side. Uh, but more interesting is actually this right-hand panel showing the wind field from the radar. And the black streamlines here show you the low-level or near-surface circulation where ELSA is centered. And the gray streamlines show you where the circulation is at about 5 kilometer height, or about 500 millibar level. So that's in the mid-levels, and you can see that this is offset to the east about 70 to 80 kilometers of where the surface center of ELSA is, indicating that the vertical alignment, that tilt that we've been talking about for a few days now, still persisting this morning. So the system has not yet become fully vertically stacked. I'll show you the Cuban radar really quick here. And we saw last night in the last video that there was a pretty ominous looking structure here. The mid-level center looked very healthy with almost an eyewall type of feature. But we talked about how the vortex tilt uh, likely meant that this was going to continue pulsing up and down in intensity repeatedly as this approached Cuba. And that has held true. This has not strengthened a lot overnight and in fact may have weakened some. And this is about to cross now uh, over Cuba and there is some mountainous terrain here. You can actually see that in some of the, the patterns highlighted in this topography background of the radar. There are mountains here, uh, but it is a thin island so the crossing will not take that long. And so the storm is expected to survive but may weaken a little as it crosses the island tonight and end up southwest of the Florida Keys sometime in the morning. Now, if we look at the, the satellite loop here, if, uh, if Cuba wasn't there, the storm is starting to show signs that it would start to recover. This tilt that it's going through will eventually cease, at least to some extent, because this stream of fast air coming in from the southeast in the Caribbean, the storm is starting to move northwestward, kind of away from that air stream. And the storm is moving notably slower than it was a couple of days ago. And this slower northwestward movement at about 10 to 15 miles per hour will allow the storm to eventually have a better environment. We're starting to see a little bit better curvature of the convection all the way around the circulation now. And if we zoom back in, we'll see that there's a more expansive area where air is getting pulled back in on the west side, back in from the northwest into the circulation. For a couple of days now, it's been very hard to even find northwest wind on this side anywhere, but we are starting to see some of that wrap around again, and that would be a healthier development for Elsa. Uh, but again, Cuba's in the way tonight, so we're not expecting anything in the way of significant intensification or re-strengthening. Once it gets across Cuba, though, the question becomes whether it can re-strengthen a little bit in the Gulf of Mexico. If we look at the water vapor satellite loop, uh, we'll see what Elsa is going to be approaching here. We'll see a general southwesterly flow across the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. Again, this has been expected for a few days now. There's a little bit of a dry air mass here, which models suggest could get pulled into Elsa's western side, especially given that wind shear is going to switch now to out of the southwest. It's been out of the northwest for most of the last couple of days. We're going to shift that shear vector around more to the southwest at about 15 knots as Elsa moves into the Gulf. 
We can see this on the GFS, looking at the upper level flow. This is where ELSA is now. Here's that southwest flow I just showed you on the water vapor imagery. And as ELSA moves up into the Gulf, you'll see that it kind of just runs into the southwesterly flow. Again, it's not a super strong shear, but it's enough that it's expected to be the main limitation on ELSA as it moves northward. However, it could still allow some restrengthening, even though it's a limitation, some gradual reorganization is likely here as the storm, once it crosses Cuba, is likely to get somewhere around 24 to 36 hours over water before moving into the Big Bend region of Florida. So there is some time for some reorganization to occur. Worth noting here that with the southwesterly shear, most of the heavy weather will be east and northeast of the storm. So if you have it centered here, most of the heaviest thunderstorms, rain, and winds are going to be in this kind of band to the east and north of where ELSA's center is tracking. So again, regardless of exactly where the storm ends up making landfall, we're expecting impactful weather to occur over the vast majority of the Florida Peninsula, given this kind of track that is paralleling the state. Here's the mid-level flow and moisture plot showing also moving up to the northwest of the Keys here on the GFS. You can see some of that dry air to the southwest could get wrapped in from time to time. That kind of pairs hand in hand with the wind shear out of the southwest. That's again the primary limitation here is that shear and the associated dry air ingestion that can happen as a result. Uh, but you can see that the GFS does show what it would still be a moderate strength tropical storm here moving northward and again some gain in strength possible. Uh, the track of most models has shifted just slightly to the west overnight. So during the last 24 hours, we've seen a slight shift kind of away from the Tampa Bay area and more toward the Big Bend area. So just a slight northwestward bump in the average track from the model guidance. And so now here's the NHC official track, which has bumped just a little bit to the west as a result. And you can see now brings this in pretty close to sign Hatchy on Wednesday morning. and. This is now bringing the conversation farther west into, you know, whether places like Appalachi Appalachicola, Alligator Point could see the storm getting pretty close to you as this comes up toward uh, the Big Bend region. So it is possible that this shifts west a little bit more. You can see the cone of uncertainty here where the center could pass, still kind of bracketing Tampa Bay to uh, the central coast of the Florida Panhandle. And so we do have watches as far west as Appalachicola now and warnings south of Cedar Key down into uh, the Florida Keys to the south. And this is again not expected to become a hurricane here. We talked about the wind shear and the limiting factors likely to keep this under hurricane intensity, but we'll keep a close eye on it once it emerges off of Cuba. It's expected to be in the Keys by early Tuesday morning or just west of the Keys and then again by Wednesday morning, it's hitting the Big Bend area. And then as it has shifted slightly to the left in the last day or so, that's starting to decrease the odds that this comes back out over water offshore of the Carolinas. That's still a possibility. You can see the cone of uncertainty does overlap the water here, so we'll be watching carefully for that. One thing to keep in mind is that even if the storm does stay inland, because the water allows for faster wind because there's less friction, we may still get some pretty stiff onshore fetch here. So some elevated surf and uh, winds may occur along coastal South and North Carolina and Georgia as well, even if the system is still inland. And of course, we're still talking about flash flooding potential here, rainfall uh, across most of Florida and then on up the coastline into the southeastern US to the southeast of the Appalachians is expected. And we may also get an isolated tornado or two, though there's not a, a, a huge risk forecasted by the Storm Prediction Center, but any tropical storm can produce tornadoes and a little bit of storm surge is also possible where two to four feet maximum in the Tampa Bay area along the west coast of Florida is forecast by the National Hurricane Center. So flooding from the ocean, flooding inland from rain always concerns no matter how weak the winds are associated with the tropical storm. And then again, tropical storm force winds, even if not a hurricane, can push trees down and cause power outages. So hazardous weather coming, do be prepared. It's been a pretty consistent forecast overall. Uh, during the last few days and not a lot of significant changes today just a slight shift to the west in the forecast track otherwise things pretty much going as expected as Elsa continues to struggle a little bit uh, but could re-strengthen slightly over the Gulf of Mexico we'll keep a close eye on that once it emerges over that part of the ocean sometime tomorrow that's it for now thanks for watching